So I'm going to do just a really quick video about pH and show you um, how to do, do the little square that I showed you today in class and then also show you how to do the estimations, how to find pH or concentrations or pOH or whatever without using the calculator, which is nice because right now I don't happen to have a calculator. So first of all, the square. Um, if you start out, pH going back and forth between hydroxide ion concentration this way go oh, crap I didn't mean to cross over like oh wow I can't draw a straight line to save my life wow that's really bad okay going back and forth between pOH I don't know why I can't draw a straight line Let's get situated a little better here okay uh, going back and forth between hydroxide ion concentration and then going back and forth between these two guys. Okay, those two are much better. Now, so the way that you do this, to get from PO or to get from pH to hydrogen ion concentration, you just take 10 raised to the negative pH. To go from hydrogen ion concentration to pH, you take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. To get from pH to pOH is 14 minus pH, and to get from pOH up to pH is also 14 minus pOH. Down here along the bottom looks exactly like this along the top to go from the P to the concentration. 10 to the negative, this time it's pOH. And down here is the negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. Over here, to get to between the two concentrations, you have to use something called Kw. Kw is the equilibrium constant or the ionization constant of water. And it just so happens to be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, which is equal to a very special number, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So this number right here is what goes into this. So to get from hydrogens to hydroxide, you take Kw divided by hydrogen concentration. To get from hydroxide up to hydrogen, Kw divided by hydroxide. Basically, we just took this and solved it for whatever it was that we were missing. Um, so now we're just going to work out a couple of examples. I'm going to go ahead and erase all this. So hopefully you have it written down. Bam. Um, coming back here now. Let's do a different color. And we're going to work out just a few examples. Um, we'll do one where, we'll write them up here, the pH is equal to 5.7. We'll do one where the pOH is equal to 10.4. Hydrogen ion concentration is 7.8 times 10 to the negative 11. And the hydroxide ion concentration is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So these are four separate uh, practice problems that we are going to do, and we're going to convert them to the other missing three numbers. So first up, with the pH of 5.7. Remember, I don't have a calculator, so I'm just simply going to estimate all these, and that's really all that you need to be capable of doing um, is estimating. Exact answers at this stage are not necessary. An estimation is almost in some ways more important because then you know if the answer you're getting spit out to you on the calculator is right or not. So how do you estimate pH? What's the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, all you got to do is look at this number right here and round it up. Even if this was like 5.2, you would still round it up. And that tells you, you don't know what this number is going to be, but it's something times 10 to the negative, whatever this is, rounded up. And that's all you got to do. This number, like I said, not really that important right now. What's important is the exponent over here, and this will be enough to get you your credit on your answer. Now, to go from pH to pOH, all you got to do is take this number, Subtract it from 14. So we're going to get 3, looks like um, 8.3. So 8.3 is our pOH. And we do the same thing to find the hydroxide ion concentration. It's going to be something times 10 to the 8.3 rounded up is negative 9. And that's all you got to do for that one. So this one was the green one at 5.7. I'm going to see if I can fit all these on the same screen. Okay, next up we'll go to blue. And that'll be our pOH is 10.4. So if pOH equals 10.4, then we're going to have a hydroxide ion concentration of something 
times 10 to the, take this, round it up, times 10 to the negative 11. And our pH is going to be equal to 14 minus this. So we'll get 0.6, looks like 3.6. Hydrogen ion concentration is going to be, you know what, I'm going to show you how to do this um, using kW. So if you use kW, remember kW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Well, I forgot my one. Whenever you divide, so in this case, we're going to take 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divide it by something times 10 to the negative 11. What you're going to do is you're going to divide these two numbers. So let's just pretend and say that this was, um, I don't know, we'll go with 6. I don't know if it's 6, but we're going to go with 6. I should have picked 5 because that would have been easier math. Um, so if this is 1 divided by, you know what, I'm going to pick 5 because... I can show you. 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. So we're going to get 0.2 times. Whenever you have exponents that you're dividing, remember you subtract the exponent. So negative 14 minus negative 11. Let me write that out so you can see it. Negative 14 minus negative 11 is really adding the opposite. So negative 14 plus 11 is 10 to the negative 3. Now we got to kick this back one more to the right which means we need to kick this down a notch so it's really 2 times 10 to the negative 4 which if you notice 3.6 rounded up negative 4. Alright moving on to the next one let's do a little purple sounds good so our hydrogen ion example 7 out hydrogen ion equals 7.8 times 10 to the negative 11. So we're going to figure out the pH first. And now since over here we rounded up to get to our exponent, take a wild guess what we're going to do to this guy. You're right, we're going to round him down. Again, this number right now we're not concerned with because we're just estimating. So if we take this number and kick it down one, our pH is going to be 10 point this 7.8 determines what our decimal is. So we're just estimating right now. So it's 10 point something. To get the pOH, <clears throat> we're going to take 14 minus this. So we know that it's going to be, you know, this is 10 point something. So let's just say it was like 10.5. 14 minus that is going to be 3.5. Coming back over here to our hydroxide ion concentration. You're going to take, um, basically, you just take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Divide it by that. So it would be 1 divided by 7.8, or you could say 100 divided by 78. It's all the same. So it's going to be 1 point something, I don't know what, uh, times 10. Oh, it would be 0 0.1, really. I didn't mean to put that there. 0 0.1 times 10 to the uh, negative 3 again. But remember, we can't do 0 0.1 times something. We have to do 1 times 10 since we kicked this to the right that means this guy has to go down so negative 4 and if you round 3.5 up 3 point anything is going to give you a negative 3 I mean a negative 4. Uh, last one y'all can plug these into your calculator I know you have calculators I don't right now I'm not in my classroom uh, so last one hydroxide ion concentration Wow, that bracket looks crazy. Of uh, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Let me get this out of the way here. So our pOH is going to be, take this number, kick it down one. So it's going to be 3 point something. Our pH is going to be 14 minus this. So let's just say it's 3.8. I'm just throwing a number out there. Uh, so 3.8, if we took 14 minus 3.8, you're going to get 0.2, 10.2. Now coming back this way to our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to something, I don't know what, times 10 to the, kick that up, negative 11. Um, if you have any questions about how to do the estimations, you know where to find me first thing in the morning. Um, other than that, good luck, and I will see you tomorrow. And don't forget, you've got um, two chances to do test corrections tomorrow morning. You've got Tuesday morning, and then you've got Tuesday afternoon. And you'll have about 30 minutes to get them done. So I'll start at 8 in the morning, 
and then I'll start at four o'clock straight up tomorrow afternoon. So see y'all tomorrow.